हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर लुबना सिद्दीकी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया न्यू डेली टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल वेटलैंड्स एंड मैंग्रूव्स विच कम्स अंडर द पेपर एनवायरमेंटल जोग्राफी नाउ इंट्रोडक्शन Wetlands are those areas where water is the main factor controlling environment and the associated plants and animal life. Wetlands are formed in those areas where the water table is at the surface of the land, near the surface of the land or where the land surface is covered by water. Wetlands are treated as transitional habitat between terrestrial that is land and aquatic that is water. consisting of a wide variety of habitat types and this is the reason why these wetlands are considered to have a distinct ecosystem with specific ecological characteristics function and values all wetlands perform certain function and hence have some values wetlands may be natural and man made fresh water or brackish that provides numbers of ecological services if the density of birds found in a particular ecosystem is high this indicates that the ecological health of that ecosystem is good however unsustainable use of wetland without reckoning of their assimilative capacity constitutes major threat to the conservation and management of these vital biodiversity rich areas thus restricting the prospects for the future generation in utilize the benefits of the ecosystem services provided by these wetlands february 2nd of every year is celebrated as wetland day now definition of wetlands The most accepted definition of wetlands is lands transitional between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem where the water table is usually at or near the surface or the land is covered by shallow water. Ramsar Convention defines wetlands as areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary. with water that is static or flowing fresh brackish or salt including areas of marine water the depth of which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters this include all inland water such as lakes reservoirs tanks backwaters lagoon creeks estuaries and man made wetland and the zone of direct influence on wetland that is to say the drainage area or catchment region of the wetlands as determined by the authority but does not include main river channels paddy fields and coastal wetlands now importance and significance of wetlands wetlands plays very important role in the hydrological cycle they provide various services like purification and regulation of flows fisheries habitat to plants animals and birds and by that it provides opportunities for recreation and tourism since the wetlands regulate hydrological functions they act as a buffer against drought and floods besides playing a crucial role in the hydrological cycle wetlands are the most productive ecosystems of the world and the potential source of carbon sequestration although they account only for about 4% of the earth's ice free land surface wetlands absorbs and restore water in monsoon and by that they reduce the risk of floods whereas in winter and summer wetlands gradually release water and hence ensure its availability to surrounding and downstream areas wetlands such as coral reefs beaches reservoirs lakes and rivers are considered to be a significant part of tourism 
and recreation in the country. Wetlands too have the cultural significance. Now types of wetlands. Wetlands are of two types, inland wetlands and coastal wetlands. Inland wetlands are important water resources refilling groundwater and subsoil formations. Coastal wetlands include mangroves and coral reefs and they often function as natural obstructor against salt water intrusion and by that protects coastal land and inland water habitats. Wetlands are the source of life. World's biodiversity depends upon wetlands and is highly linked with them. That includes many endangered and migratory species. At disaggregate level, the wetlands in India are distributed in different geographical regions. They are classified in different types on the basis of their origin, vegetation, nutrient status and thermal characteristics such as glaciated wetlands, tectonic wetlands, oxbow wetlands, lagoons, crater wetlands, salt water wetlands, urban wetlands, pond or tanks, man-made wetlands, reservoirs and mangroves etc. On the basis of physical location, the wetlands of India may be further divided as Himalayan wetlands, Indo-Gangetic wetlands, coastal wetlands and Deccan wetlands. Now Ramsar Convention and Sites Efforts have been made at domestic as well as international level to provide a proper mechanism to prevent the other to prevent the over exploitation of wetlands. Since the diversity of the wetlands is high, thus the conservation measures can be different accordingly. The Ramsar Convention and the Convention of Biological Diversity that is CBD are the two unique aspects towards the conservation of wetlands. Ramsar Convention was adopted in 1971. It is the oldest and first intergovernmental conservation, conservation convention. The convention provides for the conservation of wetlands which are having international importance especially as water fowl habitat. It came into being due to serious decline in population of waterfowl and need for conservation of habitats of migratory waterfowl. The convention also provides the framework for national action and international cooperation for the conservation and wise use of wetlands and its resources including biodiversity. The Ramsar Convention entered into force in 1975 and from all over the world contracting parties joined it. Wetlands that are on the Ramsar list of international importance often provide habitat for wildlife whose values is not expressed in monetary terms but whose aesthetic and biological diversity value is nonetheless recognized worldwide. Convention of Biological Diversity that is CBD was formed during Rio Earth Summit in 1992. India joined CBD in May 1994. The objectives of the convention are conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of components of biological diversity and fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of utilization of genetic resources. Now wetlands of India. According to National Wetland Atlas 2011, India has more than 2 lakhs wetland greater than 2.5 hectare area and about 5.5 lakh less than 2.5 hectares. The extent of wetlands has been estimated to be 15.26 million hectare. The inland wetlands account for 69.22% that is 10.56 million hectares whereas 
the coastal wetlands account for 27.13 percent that is 4.14 million hectares and other wetlands 4 percent. Around 50 percent of the earth's wet wetlands are estimated to already have disappeared worldwide over the last 100 years. In terms of the proportion of the geographical area, Gujarat, Gujarat has the highest proportion that is 17.5 percent and Mizoram has the lowest proportion that is 0.66 percent of the area under wetland. The table 1 and figure 1 shows the state-wise wetlands of international importance under Ramsar Convention. Now environmental threat to wetlands. Wetlands in India as elsewhere are increasingly facing severe anthropogenic pressure. Thus, the rapidly expanding human population, large scale change in land use and land cover development projects and improper use of watersheds have all caused a substantial decline of wetland resources of the country. Significant losses have resulted from its conversion threats from industrial, agricultural and various urban developments unsustainable levels of grazing and fishing activities followed by uncontrolled discharge of waste water, industrial effluents, surface runoff, etc. results in the proliferation of aquatic weed affect the flora and fauna which ultimately leads to the loss of and degradation of wetlands. Restoration of these converted wetlands is quite difficult once these sites are occupied for non-wetland uses. As per an estimate, India will lose about 84.0% of coastal wetlands and 13% saline wet wetlands with climate change induced seawater rise of 1 meter. Now, wetland conservation and management. Several legislations have been enacted which have relevance to wetland conservation. These includes Forest Act 1927, Forest Conservation Act 1980, the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974. India had set up 505 wildlife centuries and 100 national parks. 14 biosphere reserves, 6 heritage sites, projects on tiger and elephant conservation with the objective of effective conservation of wetlands. In 2006, the National Environmental Policy first recognized the need of legal regulatory mechanism for protection of the wetlands from degradation. After many meetings, the draft of guidelines was prepared. The draft 2008 regulatory framework for wetland conservation was made available for comments and suggestions. In May 2010, another draft of regulatory framework was put out for comments which included the draft rules 2009. Again, several comments and suggestions were set to Ministry of Environment and Forest that is MOEF and finally on the 2nd December 2010 the Union Ministry of Environment and Forest notified the wetlands that is conservation and management rules 2010. Thus the rules became a law. In March this year Central Government of India has come up with some new set of rules to protect wetlands. The draft wetland that is conservation and management rules 2016 which seeks to replace the older wetland rules 2010 are open for public comment. One of the reasons cited for bringing in the new rules has been ineffective implementation of the 2010 rules. Now conclusion. 
Wetlands are amongst the most productive ecosystems on the earth. Historically, they have been at the center of evolution of human civilization for millennia as they are means of precious ecological goods and services. The conservation of wetlands is very important by that the ecosystem can be balanced. The decreasing number of wetlands led to the evolution of various legal conventions with major aim to conserve the wetlands. Figure 1 shows major wetlands of international importance under Ramsar Convention. Now the second part of this module is mangroves. Introduction The word mangrove is considered to be a combination of the Portuguese word ming and the English word groove. The term mangroves refer to an ecological group of halophytic that is mangroves are soil tolerant plants of tropical and subtropical intertidal regions of the world plant species which is known as the salt tolerant forest ecosystem and provides a wide range of ecological and economic products and services and also supports a variety of other coastal and marine ecosystems. The specific regions where these plants occur are termed as mangrove ecosystem. These are highly productive but extremely sensitive and fragile. Besides mangroves, the ecosystem also harbors other plant and animal species. Mangroves are among the oldest and most productive wetland forests on our planet. Found in the intertidal zone, they are uniquely adapted to survive highly saline and anosic condition. They are ideal habitats for many terrestrial and marine species, carbon sinks and natural barriers against storm surges and coastal erosion. Mangroves provide invaluable services but have been declining worldwide as a result of anthropogenic and other threats. Now definition of mangrove. Mangrove has been variously defined in literature. The Oxford Dictionary mentioned the words mangrove and mangrove since 1613 indicating tropical trees or shrubs found in coastal swamps with tangled roots that grow above the ground whereas the Americans, the Spanish and the Portuguese use the term mangle and ming indicating trees and shrubs of the genus Rhizophora. Mepham and Mepham in 1984. Later, the term mangrove was referred to the individual plant or tidal forest or both as mangrove plants and mangrove ecosystem according to McNay 1968. Now, significance, importance and benefits of mangrove. Mangrove ecosystem is self-maintaining, self-repairing, self-sustaining and most productive. Mangroves form very important part of the marine food chain. They help in recycling the nutrients in coastal waters. They help to control pollution through a process called rhizofiltration. They are the source of wood and have unexplored potential for natural products. Mangroves help to trap debris, silt and stabilizes the coastline. They also provide opportunities for education, scientific research, ecotourism and socio-economic studies. The ecological importance of mangrove comes from protecting the coast from cyclones, strong wave action, floods, sea level rise, greenhouse effect and coastal erosion. The habitat provides the breeding and nursery grounds for many of the marine crustaceans, mollusks, fin, fishes, etc. and terrestrial animals that is birds, bees and other 
wildlife. However, during the recent decades, mangrove resources have been overexploited, particularly reclaimed by diking, draining, landfilling for residential, commercial, industrial, agricultural and real estate purpose. Now mangroves the world scenario. Mangroves occupy less than 1% of the world surface and are mainly found between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn on all continents covering an estimated 75% of the tropical coastline worldwide. There are more than 18 million hectares of global mangroves inhabiting, inhabiting in 112 countries and territories in the tropical and subtropical region. Around 34 major and 20 minor mangrove species belonging to about 20 genera in over 11 families have been recorded globally. Mangroves of South and Southeast Asia form the world's most extensive and diverse mangrove systems comprising 41.4% of global mangroves. Indian mangroves make up 3.1% of the total global cover and are distributed along the maritime states. Except the Union Territory of Lakshadweep covering an area of about 4,461 square kilometer along the 7,500 kilometer long Indian coastline according to Sanger 2002, Tom Linson 1986. Now mangroves, the Indian scenario. Mangroves in India account for about 3.1% of the world's mangrove vegetation and are spread uh, over spread over an area of about 4461 square kilometer along the coastal states or union territory of the country Sundarbans in West Bengal account for a little less than half of the total area under mangroves in India after West Bengal, Gujarat and Andaman and Nicobar Islands have maximum mangroves. In India, mangroves occur on the west coast, on the east coast and on Andaman and Nicobar Islands, but in many places they are highly degraded. According to the Government of India 1987, India lost 40% of its mangrove area in the last century the National Remote Sensing Agency NRSA recorded a decline of 7,000 hectares of mangroves in India within the six-year period from 1975 to 1981. In Andaman and Nicobar Islands, about 22,400 hectares of mangroves were lost between 1987 and 1997. India with a long coastline of about 7516.6 km including the in the island territories had a mangrove cover of about 6749 square km the fourth largest mangrove area in the world however a recent assessment shows that India has a total mangrove cover of only 4,628 square kilometer or 0.14 percent of the country's land area, 3 percent of the global mangrove area and 8 percent of Asia's mangroves of which about 60 percent is along the east coast that is Bay of Bengal, 27 percent is along the west coast Arabian Sea and the remaining 13 percent is in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. These mangrove habitats, 69 degree 89 minutes 5 seconds east longitude and 7 degree 23 minutes north latitude comprise three distinct zones. East coast habitats having a coastline of about 2700 kilometer facing Bay of Bengal, west coast habitats with a coastline of about 3000 kilometer facing Arabian Sea and island territories with about 
1816.6 km coastline. The state of West Bengal has the maximum cover that is 2097 square kilometer followed by Gujarat that is 1100 uh, 1103 square kilometer and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands that is 604 square kilometer. India's mangroves can be broadly categorized into deltaic, backwater, estuarine and insular types according to Thom's classification of estuary habitat. Deltaic mangroves are found along the east coast within the deltas of the Ganges, Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari and Kaveri rivers. Estuarine mangroves are found on the west coast in the estuaries of the Indus, Narmada and Tapti rivers. They are also growing in the backwaters, creeks and neritic inlets of these areas. Insular type of mangroves is found in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The table 2 shows the state-wise list of major mangrove sites of the country. Figure 1 shows the distribution of major mangrove regions in India. Now, flora and fauna of mangrove ecosystem in India. The mangrove in India is home to numerous species of flora and fauna and the presence of mangrove ecosystems on coastline can save lives and property during natural hazards like cyclones, tsunami, storm surges and erosion as well. The mangrove in India is home to a large number of over 1600 plant and 3700 animal species. The most notable species of mangrove in India include the major components like Acanthaceae, Avicenaceae or Verbenaceae, black mangrove, Comberitaceae, buttonwood, white mangrove, Assisaceae, mangrove palm, Rhizophoraceae that is red mangrove, Lytheraceae that is mangrove apple etc. families. The Indian mangroves comprise approximately 59 species in 41 genera and 29 families. Of these, 34 species belonging, belonging to 25 genera and 21 families are present along west coast. The, the, there are about 25 mangrove species which have restricted distribution along the east coast and are not found on the west coast. Similarly, there are 8 species of mangroves like Soneratia cassidularis, Sodera furutu cosa, Eurochondra c2 lucy, etc., which have been reported only from the west coast. There are approximately 16 mangrove species reported from the Gujarat coast, which Maharashtra, while Maharashtra has about 20 species, Goa 14 species, and Karnataka 10. There are hardly 3 to 4 species of mangrove which are rarely found along the Kerala coast. The associated mangrove flora is quite common to both the coast with minor variations in distribution. The floral diversity of mangroves of India is comprised of 38 crore mangrove species according to Catherine Cather 2013. Three. Now, threats to mangrove. The threats to the mangrove ecosystem could be broadly grouped into two, natural and anthropogenic. These factors may affect the system as a whole or any one entity within the system, etc. The natural threats include climatic changes, cyclones, physical processes, diseases, deterioration, pollution, grazing, agriculture, aquaculture and human encroachment including reclamation etc. are considered as the anthropogenic threats to the ecosystem. Mangroves also face threats from poorly planned human settlements, improper location of industries and infrastructure, pollution from industries and settlements, over exploitation of living natural resources, 
inadequate institutional capacities for and participation of local communities in formulation and implementation of coastal management plans. Now, conservation and restoration of mangroves. The mangrove habitat continues to decrease around the world at an alarming rate. Contrast measures are required to be taken to prevent deforestation of mangrove forest. Regular monitoring of these areas to control illegal felling of the trees should be implemented. The conservation and management of mangroves by national governments, NGOs and local communities started around the world during 1990s. Government of India declared these areas as ecologically sensitive areas under the environment that is Protection Act 1986 putting a ban on their exploitation and by the CRZ notification 1991 prohibited, prohibited development activities and disposal of waste in these areas. Need for policies and interventions became necessary in many countries as they virtually had no policies for management of mangroves or failed in enforcing the conservation policies and protection measures. The major breakthrough for the development and restoration of mangroves started since 2005 when tsunami struck the Indian oceans on 26 December 2004. But the concern of government of India for the conservation of forest and wildlife was clearly visible by a 1976 amendment to the Indian constitution which states that it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forest, lakes, rivers and wildlife. The government of India has set up the National Mangrove Committee in the Ministry of Environment and Forest, New Delhi in 1976 to advise the government about the conservation and development. This committee put forward certain schemes for conservation such as identification of selected mangrove areas for conservation, preparation of a management plan, promotion of research, adoption of multidisciplinary approach involving state governments, universities, research institutions and NGOs. Then in 1979, the National Mangrove Committee further recommended the nationwide mapping of mangrove areas, quantitative surveys of areas, rate of growth of forest trees, assessment of suitable sites for reserve forest, afforestation of degraded mangrove areas, study of management methods, the ecology of mangroves, their flora and fauna, their microbiology and the biochemistry of organic matter and sediments. Ministry had made a plan scheme for conservation and management of mangroves in 1986 and constituted national committee to advise the government on relevant policies and programs. Due to their recommendations, 15 mangrove areas in the country were identified for intensive conservation even before the year 2005 when tsunami struck the coast in, of India the initiative was also taken by MSSRF that is MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. The MSS, MSSRF launched a major program in 1996 for restoration of mangrove wetlands of the east coast of India with financial support under the India Canada Environment Facility that is ICEF and in collaboration with the Ministry of Environment and Forest and State Forest Departments of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal. India recorded a net increase of 23.34 square kilometer of mangrove cover between 2009 and 2011 thanks to efforts of one of the most industrialized states that is Gujarat in planning and regenerating the ecosystem rich in biodiversity. Now, conclusions and suggestions. 
Proper monitoring is imperative to prevent illegal activities such as poaching of mangrove fruits, fishing activities, movement of bar barges, etc. so that young plants do not get damaged, fish germ plasm is not depleted. Fisheries should be encouraged with proper vigilance and legis legislation so as to avoid damage to the existing mangroves. Along with the restoration work, awareness should be campaigned, educational materials should be made available to improve knowledge on mangrove habitats, resources, relevant le legislation, policies and conservation strategies with the help of media like magazines, films, posters, pamphlets, documentary, exhibitions, bird watching tours, study tours, competitions on mangrove knowledge, etc. I hope you have understood the concept of wetlands and mangroves. See you next time. Thank you.